Thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, my name is Nate Schiff. I'm a software developer for a company in Detroit called Rivet. Um, and just for my information, just for fun, is who's using uh, TypeScript on a daily basis in their work? About half the crowd. Who is using a different language in their daily work? Who is not doing something other than software development as their primary job? Okay, we're, we're in good company. Solid. Cool. Narrow segment. Narrow segment, which is the topic that I'm doing is narrowing. TypeScript is narrowing. <laughs> Um, so it's sort of a sort of convoluted description, or sort of like com, com opaque description. I feel like unlisted property narrowing, narrowing with the in operator. Um, and so what this amounts to is um, there's there's sort of like this impossible-ish case that uh, was previously impossible, and now TypeScript gives you a hand with uh, checking if this property exists. And so you could probably do this with has own property kind of thing, uh, but now you can do it within. Uh, so this is an example that is just from their blog post. They're defining this little interface context. It has a property package JSON, which is unknown. And that is the input parameter to their example function, try get package name. Uh, and so they're just grabbing grabbing that prop from the context. And because it's unknown, they're trying to find out what they can do with this thing. In particular, they're interested in the name field. Uh, so first, checking if it's you know null or undefined, checking if it's object. OK, looks good. Does it have name? And you would think, I, OK, I'm checking it has name. Now I can you know access that property, but you can't because at this point in time, it's object. An object has no props. I think it has some like secret prototype stuff that I try to ignore the existence of. But uh, it doesn't have the property name, which TypeScript is telling you. Property name does not exist on object. Um, and so until this 4.9 release, that was sort of the status of things. Uh, but what they're telling us is that TypeScript 4.9 makes the in operator a little bit more powerful when narrowing types that don't list the property at all. Instead of, leaving, instead of leaving them as is, the language will intersect their type with record property key being checked unknown, which again is sort of an opaque way of phrasing this. But uh, you can see when you do that, and I'm, I'm in like a slightly older version of TypeScript, uh, but when you do this, um, I'm just annotating this with uh, unknown and and this new thing, this record. I'm saying this might have this prop, this this record. And so suddenly now I can use it. Now I can check it. And it still might not be there because I, I really don't know what this context or package JSON is. But it at least is not a compiler. So I can build it and run it. And at runtime, we can actually get into this where before we couldn't. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and I suppose in, in our code base, we have the luxury of knowing the source of most of our data, which is our database, which we populate. So we know the type. Uh, but if you were dealing with less trusted sources, you can imagine them being unknown and needing to get deeper into the uh, inference of what type it is and so forth. So it's kind of neat figuring out, figuring out what props your stuff has. I, th I think one other thing to mention, if, if you're not familiar with unknown, uh, it's kind of like any, except it's better, right? So if you use any, you're giving up on any type checking whatsoever with it. It'll just work wherever. Uh, if you find yourself using any, most of the time, just replace it with unknown, and, and your types will get better. It may cause you headaches, right? Like You have to deal with it then, but it will be more safe. Absolutely. And yeah, for, for folks who... I was just asking if that's why they, um, but just recently they seem to have switched the suggestion for when you do a catch block and get the error. It used to sort of default to any when VS Code would put it in for you, and now they're saying it should be unknown, so... 
I think that must be why. Yeah. If anyone uses React Query, recently React Query, like I think it was like today, uh, is changing this that they were they would type the errors as unknown, and recently they they decided because uh, it is technically true that you can throw something that's not an error. You can throw a string, you know. So. <clears throat> What they decided to do is, if you throw something that's not an error, they will detect that and wrap it in an error, and then you throw that. Which means that, like, if you're already throwing errors, then nothing changes. But it now means that you don't have to deal with unknown. At least you can do, you know, error dot message, and you can take the things off of the error prototype that or whatever that you know are going to be there if it's an error. So I think it's kind of an interesting. It kind of intercedes with this in operator thing. I love this. I'm going to be using this. So thanks for any other question. Cool, thanks, bro. For sure.